Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little optic right here. It is the uh, Trigicon ACOG. This one here has the 1.5 magnification. It is the TA45 model. So this one here is the 1.5 by 24. They also make a 1.5 by 16. Uh, real quick, why would it go to this one over the other one? This one has more eye relief. So throughout the intro of the video, you probably noticed that, especially for an ACOG, this thing was way out front. Um, that's because it has a really, really good eye relief, which we'll get into a little bit here in more detail. But 1.5 power scopes, particularly ACOGs, don't sell as well as some of the more higher powered ones. I think there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, number one is the fact that the military generally goes with the 4 or 3.5 power scopes. Um, so folks just like to use what the military uses as well as they were in the military, so they use what they're comfortable with. Um, Additionally, I think these ones don't sell as well because a lot of people just haven't used 1.5 magnification scopes. Um, myself, I've used the AUG as well as the FN Bullpup with the 1.5 magnification on there, and both of them really, in my opinion, gave you some offer uh, additional capabilities, I should say, at distance, but still gave you the CQB um, capabilities, if you will. So I really do like the 1.5 Personally, we'll get into that a little bit later on in the review in a little bit more details, but let's take a look at some of the close-up details of this particular scope. optic comes shipped in this nice little polymer case here it's got padding on the inside as you guys can see which keeps it protected if you want to store it in there you have your nice reticle uh, guide in here as well as user manual we have our uh, sticker and I think the tool you need to adjust it it also comes with a uh, m16 carry handle mount um, if any of you guys out there still have those and it comes with a lens pen this is used to clean the lens um, if you want to do that before getting into the details on the optic itself, I want to discuss the mount. The mount is not a Trigicon mount, it's American Defense Manufacturing. This one here has the two throw levers, which is designed for the larger ACOGs. Of course, it works just fine on here, but you'd probably be a little bit better off weight-wise with one of the uh, one-clamp mounts. So uh, either way, will work just fine, but we'll put links down below for those looking for that. Now, let's get into the optic itself. Basic design is that it's powered by two different sources. Number one is the fiber optic rod that you see up here. Number two is the tritium insert inside the actual optic itself. So even in low to no light situations, your reticle is going to be illuminated by that tritium. And that tritium, by most accounts, is going to last somewhere between 10 to 15 years. So very durable there. And if it ever goes out on you while you have it, uh, Trigicon will replace it and retrofit it for a small fee. Um, I've actually even heard of folks getting them replaced for free, but I'm not going to make those guarantees. Uh, I believe there is a fee, but it just depends who you talk to, I suppose, at customer service. But um, you can see here when I actually cover up the fiber optic that the tritium is still glowing. Of course, in low light, you don't need a huge bright reticle, which is what this fiber optic rod is going to give you there. So it provides a pretty good sort of auto adjusting reticle for most situations. The only thing I'm going to say that's sort of a downside to it is that the fiber optic uh, sometimes can gather a little too much light on bright sunny days. That's really on all ACOGs. That said, on these smaller ones, being that it has a smaller fiber optic gathering tube, it's much less of a problem than it is on the big brothers. So not a huge deal and very, very rarely will you ever run into it at all anyway. On the bottom portion of your screen here, we have a TA31, which is a great optic. It's a four powered optic and uh, really it's very good for what it is. Now, some of the advantages of the lower power optic, the biggest one in my opinion is gonna be eye relief. The TA31 has about a 1.5 inch eye relief, whereas this one on paper, they say it has a 3.6 inch eye relief. However, I've mounted it out really far. We mounted it out actually on the KMR rail for the BCM rifle and you can still see it just fine. So it has a lot more eye relief. Um, so you can mount it forward, of course, giving you a little bit more rail space towards the rear if you guys want to put anything back there. Additionally, if you're using like an AK and you have a mount that's forward, that's gonna be a big advantage of this optic versus some of the other ACOGs out there. So what you lose with that longer eye relief compared to some of the other models is field of view. So the field of view here is gonna be a little bit more narrow um, at 100 yards, say, than some of the other ones that are gonna be maybe 10 feet wider. So pros and cons, but of course, if you're shooting with both eyes open, that's really not much of a big deal anyway, because you're going to have the situational awareness regardless. 
like all ACOGs, the housing is made of 7075 T6 aluminum, and uh, it's got this rubberized sort of polymer wrap on the outside of it, and what that does is protect it from the elements. Of course, the scope itself is nitrogen purged to prevent any sort of moisture from getting inside of it. Now this is submersible down to 100 meters, so that's pretty impressive uh, that you can do that. Of course, what you have to do in order to get that type of submersion, submersion capabilities, make sure your caps are on tight, they are O-ring sealed. And uh, while we're at, on the subject, you can see here the windage and uh, elevation knobs are located on top and sides. And uh, you do need a screwdriver to adjust these ones or some sort of, you can use actually the rim of a 223 bullet works as well. Um, but they are half MOA clicks, so you're roughly talking about half an inch of adjustment at 100 yards which, with each click. The 1.5 and 2 power magnified optics in the ACOG line really aren't as popular as some of the other ones. So we're going to give you a quick size comparison with another ACOG and some other optics. Uh, this is the 31 we showed you earlier. You can see it's pretty much uh, same length, I guess you'd say, but it's just beefier all the way around. It's thicker because they have to get those uh, additional lenses, or larger size lenses, I should say, in there to magnify. So, of course, both are prism scopes, which is a very durable design. This here is a uh, Aimpoint R1 on a Fortis mount just to give you guys a size comparison there so it's certainly going to be a little bit smaller now when we're talking about comparing the uh, aim points to this which I'm sure is a natural question a lot of folks are going to ask uh, yep this one's a little bit lighter um, but neither of them you need to replace batteries so that's a huge thing for sort of a bedside gun in my opinion you just pull it up and it's always ready I definitely like that um, this is of course you can adjust the brightness manually on this one it's sort of automatic and one sort of big pro for the ACOG over the uh, aim point line is the clarity of the glass. It's huge. It's it's not even close. Like, you know, your aim points have a slight bluish green tint, depending on whom you ask. These ones are crystal clear. Um, you absolutely cannot complain about the glass in the ACOG. It's just top notch. And uh, this one obviously is going to give you a little bit more magnification, which is going to allow you to engage things a little bit. Uh, at a little bit further distances consistently. Uh, last optic we're going to compare it to is our EOTech. I believe this is the uh, XPS2. So you can see size-wise sort of how that compares. Um, just for those folks that have these optics and might want a size comparison. One thing I didn't really harp on so far in the video is the durability of these optics. ACOGs are known for just being some of the most durable optics made. Um, here on the channel, I often recommend aim points due to their durability and battery life. I'm going to say that the ACOGs are going to fall right into the same category in terms of durability and obviously battery life because this particular model doesn't have a battery. So um, I really do think they have a lot of advantages in terms of durability. You, people have dropped their rifles out of, uh, of helicopters have been blown up in IEDs and stuff like that. Their barrels have been bent, but their ACOGs have been functioning. So um, stories like that really sort of add to the legend of the ACOG that it's developed over the last 15 to 20 years with a lot of combat experience behind it. So um, durability is really unquestioned, in my opinion, for the ACOGs top of the line. So that durability comes at a cost, though. These things aren't cheap. We picked this one up over at Georgia Optics. I believe right now they're like 990 or 980 or something like that. One thing I want to point out, though, about the folks at Georgia Optics, if you find anything cheaper, they'll at least match it, may even beat it. So uh, if you do, by all means, uh, let them know, and they'll at least match it, may even beat it. So that's one thing there. So that's the list price, at least as of today. But who knows? If you find something cheaper, it may be even a little bit less. But that cost really is the number one thing you'll hear people say about ACOGs, like, oh, they're so expensive, and that's true, but you never really hear people say they don't work or they suck, because they don't. Um, the glass is exceptional, like we already talked about, and the 1.5 magnification, let's just talk about that a little bit more. Um, most folks are familiar with like 1x4 or 1x6 scopes. Um, most of those aren't really true 1x. In fact, I've never actually seen a true 1x, so when you have those down to one setting, that's about what this looks like. You can just about make out your front sight when you're looking through it but it's not really gonna you're not gonna be able to co-witness and shoot with it so that's another advantage of having these quick detach um, levers there if anything ever should happen to your optic you can take them off and then go right back to your irons but the 1.5 definitely in my opinion gives you a much greater capability to shoot at distance particularly with this reticle so there's other reticles uh, that are available than this triangle one i picked the triangle one because the tip of it gives you a nice sharp aiming point. The entire triangle itself is 8 MOA, but right on that tip, it really allows you to get fine, precise shots out of distance. And uh, one thing I want to point out too, that doesn't affect me, but I always use my wife as sort of a guinea pig for things because she's cross high dominant and has astigmatism. So for optics, she's a good person to hand it to and ask what she thinks. Uh, she didn't have any sort of flaring with this like she does with uh, red dots. 
don't know if it's because of the magnification or what, but for folks with stigmatism, at least her anyway, that may be a little bit crisper in terms of an aiming point. So that's just one person's perspective, but I would imagine she's probably not alone there. That's about it, guys. I think if you have any other questions, by all means, post below in the comments section. We covered most of the details, but I will try to answer them if we can. If you have any really specific questions, the folks at George Optics should be able to help you out. They're their number one uh, seller of Trigicon Optics in the country, so they move a lot of them, probably get a lot of questions. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. I truly appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next video.